Joaquin Phoenix makes his return as Joker, but this time he's not alone. Lady Gaga joins as the latest actor to take on Harley Quinn. Premiering this at the Venice Film Festival with Michael by your side. I mean, how special was that moment for you? It was extremely special for us to, you know, go out uh, as a couple together. Uh, you know, I love him so much. My mom really did good advising she me. She found to, him for you. She yes. found him, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's amazing. I just wanted to make sure he felt, he felt loved. Lady Gaga was solo as she surprised fans at an early screening of her new film, Joker Fully Ado. The movie hits theaters October 4th. Gaga embodies Harley Quinn opposite Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. The physical transformation in Tilly was actually really challenging. She definitely, um, like, has a particular affinity for darkness. She'll do bad things to get what she wants. I saw a lot of myself in her, actually, when I watched it back, but things that people don't know about. The Joker is me. Ahead of the movie's release, Gaga dropped a companion album titled Harlequin and surprised 130 fans in London with a listening party. Good morning to you. This is for all of your uncomfortable dinner parties. Yeah! This is for all your crazy times. We hope that you will get drunk together and have a good time. Yeah! It's so good to see you again. How are you? Nice to see oh, you. Can I tell you, this is the best birthday present I could ask for talking to you Happy again. birthday. You so are you having a good day? I'm having the best day. Oh, yeah. Nowhere else I'd rather be, honestly. He's spending it with me. Is Michael joining you tonight? He's, he's, you know, yes, he is. He's just not here right now. <laughs> I love it. Now, seeing live on this set, you know, you did it with Bradley Cooper, and now you're doing it with Joaquin Phoenix. What would you say you brought to maybe help them come out of their shell a little bit? And what did they do to help you come out of yours? You know, I feel like, uh, my relationship with Bradley was totally different from Joaquin, but uh, there was definitely a musical element in both films. So it was really fun to bring, you know, all of my experience uh, to the table each time. And I would say with Joaquin, like just like reminding him that he can be just as raw with his vocals as he is with his acting. And I think that that was really, it was really special. Congratulations on this record, by the way. Thank you. Joaquin Phoenix's portrayal of the Joker in 2019 earned him his first Oscar. And when we sat down with him, the actor told us about a vital part of the role, the Joker's signature laugh. Uh, Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? I had the part, um, but I... I felt like I needed to audition the laugh because it, I, I didn't know if I had it or not. Um, so I asked Todd to, to come over to my house um, and to, you know, audition the laugh. And uh, he said that wasn't necessary. And I said it was. It was really important that I was able to do it in front of him um, whenever I needed to. There were some scenes where, um, I guess, for whatever reason, it, it came out and it felt right, and other scenes that it was, a, it was a struggle, and sometimes one take would work and another wouldn't. It just was, I think, something that was alive in a way, and, and um, yeah, I don't know what affected that. Yeah. Come on, Murray. Do I look like the kind of clown that could start a movement? I killed those guys because they were awful. Everybody is awful these days. It's enough to make anyone crazy. One thing that everybody was talking about on these boards was about how their medication affected their weight. Mm -hmm. um, and some people would talk about losing a lot of weight. Some people talk about gaining weight. And I said, let's go with the weight gain because that will be easier for me uh, as an actor. And Ty said, no, no, no. I think we want to go with the weight loss. And so it... it it was something that I've done before, and I was, uh, I, I swore when I did it before that I'd never do it again. Um, but it seemed like it was really important for, for the character, and I think it, it ended up affecting me in, in ways that, that I hadn't anticipated, and certainly it affects your emotional and mental state. But really, I think the thing that I, that I didn't expect at all was how... I felt like I could move my body once I'd lost all that that weight. I mm -hmm. felt like this this um, 
a unique control over my body and how I moved. Um, for whatever reason, I, I don't know why, it doesn't really make sense, right? Um, but somehow it kind of gave me a, a new unexpected feeling and, and that became really in, important for the character. Don't go anywhere. We've got more great content for you right here on ET. I'm just gonna hurt you really, really bad. I think the thing that I took from from Heath and from Jack and from others was how brave they were, how fearless their performances were, how they threw themselves into it, and how big a risk they all took. Uh, yeah, so that was wonderful. I'm definitely indebted to those actors for raising the bar um, and pushing me to work even harder. In Suicide Squad, the world was introduced not only to Jared Leto's Joker, but Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, a role Margot would go on to play two more times. It was the sequence where you were shooting Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. But were you channeling more of like a Marilyn Monroe or Madonna material girl? Uh, a bit of both. Because I think there's like a bit of Harley in, in both. And that not only gives you a, an iconic moment to kind of replicate that Marilyn look on the stairs, it also meant that we all got to do dance lessons. And uh, <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> In the film, Harley has a revenge makeover after her breakup with the Joker, cutting her hair. In real life, Margot has an unusual ritual with her BFFs. Anytime a dude breaks up with a girl in the group, uh, all the girls go and egg his car. So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. so that happens. One time yes. I broke up with a boyfriend and they were like, how dare he, we're gonna go egg him. And I was like, no, don't, yeah. I broke up with him. He's a really nice person. Please don't egg his car. It's but amazing. Thank you, I love you guys. That's don't amazing. do that. have been many acclaimed live action performances of the Joker and Harley Quinn, but some of the most beloved portrayals have been by actors who have only used their voices. Bring it. We get to ping pong a lot of like comedy and bad words and naughty business yes. up in the animation world. And we don't have to put makeup on. No, sweatpants all day long. I need a crew. No, you need a shower. It's eight hours of that I don't have to spend in hair and makeup. Kaylee Cuoco produced and starred as Harley Quinn with Lake Bell as Poison Ivy. But beware, this cartoon is not for the kids. How dirty does it really get? Dirty. Harley? It's me, When I read the script, I, were you just like, yes! yes! This is gonna be the start of something huge. This is a departure for you especially from, you know, a network show, things are a little more family friendly. Who came up with that? You did. That's right, I did. But I'm pretty sure this would be a departure for anyone. Yeah, it's so I was like, psychotic. Why is it less of a yeah, it's for me? really, it's like, well, it you, seems wait. more like you. <laughs> right, exactly. Most people, I don't know if people know the behind the scenes, but we in. don't shoot together. We don't okay. record together. We don't even get to hang out. This is so how this much is, we just met today. I don't even know this woman. Yeah. Another set secret, there was a limit on the amount of bad words they could use per episode. And you really make use of those. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's often a fight. <laughs> yeah. About who, who gets, gets to get, more yeah, of them? Who like, gets the last? Did Lake take the last <laughs> again? Will you use any of this interview? <laughs> this will not air. This will not air. Da -da 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 I got a call saying, would you be interested in auditioning for the Joker? And I thought, well, sure, I mean, I'll do it, but I mean, what are the odds? I'm not gonna get it, and I don't want it. The Joker's too high profile. If I was gonna play a character on the series, I'd wanna play Clayface or some character that nobody has a preconceived notion. And Joker is really sort of the Moriarty of, of Batman. I mean, he's the villain. Lex Luthor is for Superman. But lo and behold, I got it, and it was really kind of fun. 
And now let's welcome our host, the clown prince of crime, the Joker. Got the part and six months ago, or six weeks, whatever it was, went by. I'm driving to the recording session and I can't remember what the hell the Joker sounded like. I'm on the freeway going, I'll get you. I didn't know. I mean, it was horrible. People looking over at me saw me testing out that maniacal laugh, and I'm sure they called uh, 911 or something. And people say I'm crazy. <laughs> you know, at the beginning, see, they weren't really sure, you know, how scary to make him. Because he can get silly, he can get goofy, he can be intense. There's a lot of different levels there, and uh, it was for Children's Television Network, and so they would say, gee, that's a little psycho. I mean, give us a, they do an alternate where I do it lightheartedly. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of what we call comic book fundamentalists, and they're not gonna like it no matter what. You know, I get letters saying, you know, that uh, Joker doesn't kill enough people in the series. He's not insane enough. Well. Uh, it's a cartoon series and it's in the children's lineup on Fox, so it's something that we, I mean, I threaten all the time. I, I'm all bark and uh, no bite. Smell the roses, Batman! My wife nudged me and said, look who's at the next table. And I turned around, it was Cesar Romero. She says, go, go say hi to him. I said, oh, he doesn't know me. And, no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And I thought, well, if I don't do it now, I, I never will. And uh, I went up to him and I said, Mr. Romero, I'm Mark Hamill. I'm an actor and I'm playing the Joker in the animated series. And he just, you know, that energy he had, you know, people forget how well done that character was. I mean, within the context of that kind of silly series that they did, it was a comedy. It got nominated for an Emmy for best comedy, but he, he just lit up. Was he in any way inspirational for the way you the Joker. I was afraid, basically, to look either at the movie or the TV series until I had a few under my belt. And you know what's funny? I was making copies for my nieces and nephew for Christmas this year, and I put on one of the earliest ones, and I just don't like it. I mean, I can see where I made choices. By the time I got to the fifth, sixth, seventh episode, I really felt like I had him down. Trying to cheat the Joker, are you? Well, we'll see who has the last laugh. But I'm just having a blast. I mean, it, he's only in 20% of the episodes. See, you know, it's like my accountant is saying, well, yeah, Joker's good, but why didn't you get Alfred or Robin or Batman? <laughs> You're never satisfied. The Joker first appeared in the Batman comic book in 1940, but the first actor to play the villain on screen was Cesar Romero in the 1960s Batman TV show. Oh, forget the morals. Just get us back to jail so we don't have to listen to these corny jokes. I had great fun uh, playing the Joker and Batman, for instance. You know, which was a, a fun show to do and was a very popular show. And it's time. It was such a great and, part. Well, yes, it was, but it was fun to do. Uh, uh, Burgess Meredith, who played the, uh, the Penguin, loved doing the show. He loved going around, you know, he's a, and he's a very serious actor, always has been. Sure. He loved going around going quack, 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 you know? <laughs> <laughs> So it was fun. We had a lot of fun doing the show. Coming up, Heath Ledger's co-stars reminisce on their time with the late actor. Ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Jack Nicholson's Joker in the 1989 Batman has often been praised by actors who have taken on the role, including the late Heath Ledger. Ledger's portrayal as the Joker earned him a posthumous Oscar and the admiration of not just fans, but his co-stars as well. Heath um, just immersed himself completely in it, uh, did a Superb job. He gives a phenomenal performance in this. He's terrifying, but working with him was, was fantastic, phenomenal. I mean, he's such a professional, such a warm and, and gentle guy, so unlike the character he created. Uh, uh, I thought my jokes were bad. I think he's doing something in this movie that um, 
is extremely rare, even among the greatest actors. It's extremely sad. We all got such joy from watching him do this. What have you done with him? Me? I was right here. Pretty amazing to see an actor, uh, you know, come to set as himself, as an ordinary guy, you know, with the makeup on and everything, but as he, and then just get into character and create this monster. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty fascinating thing for anyone who knew Heath particularly. He stayed in character when he was in his makeup and when he wasn't, he was Heath. You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, I just do things. I had my time with Heath in the movie. I'm in a kind of a, a paralyzed state or whatever, and I'm just watching him do his thing and just kind of hanging on and doing my job and admiring him at the same time. He was electric. Being around that was inspiring and fun. You know, it's just like you could just do anything. Well, you look nervous. Is it the scars? I certainly tried to help him as far as really giving him the, the idea of the texture of this character, what this character would be in um, in the world of Batman Begins, in the world we'd, we'd create it. I think actually, as some actors do, drew a lot from the appearance of the character. He was fascinated when he'd do a wardrobe fitting, he'd start to move in a particular way, pick up a prop, a knife or a garnet, you know, move it in a particular way. And he would start to find the character that way as well. Could you please just give me a minute? He made um, uh, unconventional choices. I think that's where if anything that our business or what we do can can get into the realm of art is when is choices and when someone is willing to to not take the conventional path but you know um, go out on their own um, that's when things get exciting i do feel like he loved his character he loved to act uh, he loved doing this movie he loved chris you will complete me you're garbage you kills for money don't talk like one of them you're not even if you'd like to be. I had already felt a, a tremendous sense of responsibility in terms of crafting his performance in the edit suite because simply because he had put so much into the character already. It's a testament to his ability as an actor as to how far this this guy, this Joker is from, from who Heath was as, as a person. You know, everybody asks you about it all day and it's it almost doesn't even feel real anymore, but it's just so heartbreaking.